Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, so I'm going to be talking about electrical vehicle charging and parking facilities. Next slide. I'm from the Green Parking Council, the newly hired executive director. And next slide, please. <clears throat> we are a national 501c3 organization, and we promote uh, green parking practices, are developing certification and credentialing programs, um, promote open source standards and, and cooperation in the parking industry, as well as leadership and, and training development. Next slide, please. <clears throat> we really try to unite uh, parking, green building folks, clean technology, renewable energy, smart grid infrastructure, urban planning, and the sustainable mobility world, and weave all of these into a unified whole that can help push forward sustainability in the parking industry. Next, please. So the question is, um, why should garages and lots offer electric vehicle charging at all? Isn't everybody just going to charge their car at home overnight? Next slide. And for us, this is really about garages being an opportunity. Uh, this is a library garage in Kansas City, uh, for instance. So how do we take advantage of the opportunity to help use our garages and our parking lots to help the uptake of electric vehicles? Somebody want to mute themselves there? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have feedback. Uh, if you could please mute your phones, that would be a big help. Thanks. Thank you. So among the things we can do is as parking garages, facilities, industry, we can promote adoption and awareness. We do offer all-day charging. Many of our folks park all day, and eight hours is eight hours, whether it's at home or, or during the work day. Um, urban garages and lots often serve residential users as well as daytime parkers. Uh, we can certainly help overcome range anxiety. Uh, if you have to commute 30 or 40 or 50 miles and you can recharge your car while you're working, um, that will be great. We can actually extend your range by doing that. Um, as, as an organization and in industry, we're acknowledging that we're part of the car's ecosystem. Where your car spends time during the day or at night uh, is important to look at sort of in the, in the life cycle of your car, it's especially important to BMW, who's recently come on uh, as a partner of ours and is very committed to the concept of sustainability uh, throughout their organization and the life cycle of a car. Um, it's a great place for us to be because it's hip right now. Building owners like it, tenants want it, and it's a service we can offer um, in a highly competitive industry. Um, so EV charging and going green is good for the planet, good for people, and good for our bottom lines. So like making a garage look like books, we're engaged increasingly in this area um, because we can be and because it's good. Next slide, please. Uh, we add public value when we do. This is a shot of, from Edison Parking in New York City, which runs many surface lots. Uh, they, in particular, appreciate the public relations value of being involved in EV charging. Um, in the past, planners and the like would vilify uh, parking lot operators as scour scourge infesting lots that should be community gardens or buildings. And now we have lots that uh, have green walls, offer zip car, sh car sharing locations, can charge sustainable vehicles, and even get celebrated by the mayor. Uh, um, so do, through doing things like this, parking then morphs from becoming a symptom of the problem into a piece of the solution. So it's a great place for the industry to be. Next, please. So Ben asked us to talk about the le vest locations for EV charging stations inside our garages. And we need to think about both installation and maintenance costs um, as well as performance when we do this. Next slide, please. One of the great things about parking garages and attended lots is that they offer a protected staffed alternative to unattended EV charging stations. One of our members' um, control module uh, produces charging stations um, that, and their pitch is that often we don't think about the kind of challenges there are for on-street charging, in particular in areas of the country, such as Connecticut, where I am, where we can get extensive snowfall during the winter months. Next slide, please. So I couldn't resist using this picture. Uh, early experience suggests that choosing high visibility spots within our garages, um, either within sight of the booth or the manager, 
are important because both we can assist people charging their vehicles, and this is new for a lot of folks, everybody really, uh, and also for security. And obviously we want to be in protected areas of the garage away from the snow and ice. Um, many garages, when you think about it, are actually open spaces, and so you can get snow drifts and the like. Next slide, please. Clearly, installing near existing electrical service is something to think about um, because it helps us save on installation costs. Next slide, please. So one of the questions that Ben asked us to talk about was how do we handle the potential for vehicles hogging a limited number of EV charging spaces? Next slide, please. So first of all, we should be so lucky to have this problem. My guess is that right now most EV charging spots in U.S. garages are, as we speak, probably unoccupied. So it's not a huge issue for us right now. Next slide. But uh, as EVs roll out uh, um, and hit the street and demand rises, one approach is to use parking valets to manage access to the limited resources uh, of our chargers. And this is, again, we're all sort of, as you know, figuring this out as, as we move along. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so one approach inside garages and, and also in lots is to place the charger between two parking spots so there's at least the potential for two EVs to charge together uh, or, or be serially charged. Next slide, please. Here's a setup. Um, this is a garage in a building that houses my gym. And um, you can see there are two spots there, and, and cars can be, either car can be charged. And it's, frankly, it's wonderful for me to go to my gym and see a $100,000 car and be able to point out to people how wonderful it is um, that this is happening. And many times these spots are unoccupied, but it's really wonderful when they are. And it's really wonderful that there's an opportunity for two cars to charge. I haven't seen that yet in my experience. Next slide, please. Um, so Control Module is one of our partners, um, and um, they've developed a ceiling-mounted unit in the cord for the charger, actually. Uh, um, you press a button, and it drops down, and it retracts at the end when you're done. And I believe they've developed um, a, a way of using that, this technology so you can have it on a rack sliding along a wall. So you could have a bank of EVs or, or cars needing to be charged parked and an operator uh, or a valet can actually move from car to car. So that's one of the areas that's being looked at um, as the technology in the market emerges. Next, please. Okay, um, <clears throat> airport parking is clearly an opportunity for us. The parking spot is another one of our partners. Sorry, I couldn't find a better shot for this. Um, <clears throat> airport parking is interesting because people's cars are there for a long time. Um, you can have a level two charger and charge somebody's car in eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. If their car is there for seven hours, you can charge it, shift it over somewhere else. You typically have valet parking in airport parking lots. Um, or if you know when somebody's going to come and get their car, you can schedule it so their car is charged the day before. But again, uh, with level two charging, at least, um, the opportunity to be able to, ha to valet it around is one of the things that will make this increasingly possible for us as uh, the market expands. Additionally, if you're going to do level one charging, which you can do if the cars are going to be there for a while, um, essentially level one charging is just a normal 110 outlet, so you can very cheaply set up a bank of those um, for long-term parking facilities. Next. So... Figuring out the model or the models for sustainable, meaning profitable, uh, non-residential uh, electric vehicle charging is really a central question for all of us. And there are multiple approaches being tested in the marketplace right now. Next, please. Mark is going to talk in a bit about the charge point system, which is a leading system for common payment regardless of the charging station ownership, which is a very neat idea. Uh, it's actually being deployed by Central Parking, which is another one of our launch partners. Um, 350 Green is another player in this marketplace. They've just teamed up with the nation's lar largest real estate company, Simon Property. So it's a very um, fertile marketplace right now. Everybody's trying to figure out how to do this. And so it's exciting to be part of and to watch it blossoming. Next, please. Some parking operators, and this is again Edison, are offering free charging. Uh, basically, if you pay for the parking, 
they'll give you the charging for free. For these operators, um, they really feel like most EV drivers will only be topping off their charge, that the modest electricity cost can be absorbed into the parking fee, and that the promotional value and the loyalty being built are, are really worth the cost. Next, please. Some folks have really turned this concept into a mantra. And this is an example of some of the marketing from Green Garage Associates, another player in the marketplace. Next, please. Um, this is some of their marketing materials. Um, they offer both level one and level two charging. And um, the, uh, what I like about the free juice bar approach is that it's witty and fun, um, like owning a cool electric car should be. And it's, it's really about sort of helping develop this marketplace and, and helping it be exciting and uh, encourage adoption. Um, by the way, this free car charging approach is something that hotel operators like. Typically, they have contracts with parking operators to manage their parking. This becomes an add-on sort of like free Wi-Fi. It doesn't cost the operator much. It may give them a, a, a competitive edge in bidding on contracts. Next, please. So Ben also asked us if, as people are planning and building new parking facilities, are they thinking about and planning for the expected increased demand for EV charging? Next, please. And the answer is for at least the more thoughtful operators and consultants, um, people are very thoughtful about this. Part of our mission as an organization is to raise the bar for thinking about what parking can be. Um, we like to say that we're changing the nature of parking. And here's an example of a facility being developed in Ann Arbor by Carl Walker Associates that stresses the importance of the idea of demonstrating what we can do. And the little plaque there is a Green Parking Council demonstrator site plaque that they're proudly displaying. Um, what's nice about this is Carl Walker is a leading parking consulting firm, and this was part of its presentation at the National Parking Association. So it's really contributing to the will building um, and putting EV charging and sustainability on the parking industry's uh, uh, menu. Next, please. In Connecticut, I know, which happens to be where I live, um, we are redeveloping all our highway rest stops. And Clean Cities here in Connecticut has had some discussions with that developer. And I believe we've convinced them to at least put in the wiring infrastructure so that when we can convince them or when the market matures enough that they feel comfortable putting in charging stations, they are actually developing or, or, implement, or, or installing the things that will make that easy to do. Next, please. So where is all this going? I mean, you'll hear from Skeeter, Canopy, and Michael at the car charging group on this later, but here are a couple parting thoughts for me. Next, please. While we're anticipating early adopters, hype is good. This is really a moment for us to, to be the cart leading the horse, as it were. It's good for the auto industry. It's good for the planet. It's good for forward-looking park, parking operators and it's good for nurturing early adopters. Next, please. Raising the bar and recognizing industry leaders is important for us. We recently celebrated 25 parking operators and structures across North America for their commitment to sustainable parking practices of all sorts. Uh, here's another one of our partners, Standard Parking, working with an incredibly beautiful garage that has a wonderful park on top in downtown Boston. And while we were visiting there, the operator of the garage told us um, a story of how one of her tenants was really excited at the idea that he was going to be purchasing a Chevy Volt soon and very much wanted her to have charging stations for him to use. And so she pretty quickly assembled something. It wasn't very well developed, but she was excited and he was excited. Uh, it's wonderful for us to hear the stories of emerging, emerging demand. We're doing a lot of supply side work here, but, but it's finally like the demand has caught up with us. Next, please. Um, and I think figuring out beautiful, iconic ways of promoting electric vehicles and their charging is really important right now to nurture the, the growth of the industry. This is a Dell computing facility. There, there are others out there. Oh, I'm losing my screen. Next, please. And here's an example of a concept I really like. Um, these folks call it a green garage oasis, and it offers recycling, EV charging, tire inflation, other green amenities in a very public and celebratory way. Uh, this is a Brookfield property in Los Angeles, or a major 
uh, real estate owner and, and another one of our partners. Uh, this was funded with stimulus funds, I believe, and using Coulomb and ChargePoint chargers. Um, but it, it's, it's nice as a, a, um, a demonstration of the way that you can sort of do placemaking with uh, EV chargers in the whole green infrastructure in your garage or your parking operation to really encourage the uptake of these new technologies. And we're, we think it's a wonderful opportunity to celebrate and encourage sustainable business, uh, sustainable transportation, and generally good living practices. Thank you very much. Next slide is the last slide. It's got my email and our website. We encourage you to visit it and uh, get in touch with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Uh, I believe Jay actually has a couple questions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thanks, Paul. Um, a couple of quick questions. Um, one is, are there any resources that are publicly available or that you guys have that uh, folks can learn more about the typical uh, equipment and installation costs, um, you know, for level two charging for an existing parking garage? Um, there will be. We can assemble some soon. I shouldn't say soon. Probably in the next two to three months, it will be up on our website. Um, right now, I encourage people to email us, um, and we can help get that out to you. And if anybody's interested in helping us assemble that, that would be a wonderful thing to do, too. Great. Um, and then uh, another question is, um, does the um, kind of prohibition um, that most states have on third-party electricity sales, um, you know, only the utility can sell electricity, does that really present a significant barrier um, for, you know, kind of third parties to actually set up uh, this, um, you know, kind of public infrastructure and, you know, uh, charging stations in parking garages? Uh I have not heard that yet, and maybe Michael can talk more about that. Um, you know, uh, uh, when people are charging, uh, par uh, charging for charging, I think they set a fee based on something, and so they avoid that. Somehow they, they, they recoup the electricity costs. It has been a concern where people have been generating electricity in their parking garages, either through windmills or solar, and want to sell it back to the grid. And it's difficult to do in some states, and that's an area that we're starting to look at. But I haven't heard this talked about as an impediment to folks installing EV charging uh, uh, facilities. Got it. Uh, and then just uh, a couple of quick more. Um, is there a, um, and if you, if you know this, is there a number of, let's call it, you know, kind of charging stations or charge spots um, where the cost to the utility um, of the site becomes prohibitive. Um, you know, if you put in 25 charging stations in a garage, does it, you know, then become um, too expensive to the utility? 50, 100, 150. Um, you know, kind of, is there a magic number out there, or is it really dependent, you know, site by site, state by state? I have not heard of people installing a large number of chargers anywhere yet. Um, for, from a parking operator's perspective, you're essentially reserving those spots for cars that need those chargers. And the, so if you had 25 spots with chargers, you wouldn't have 25 cars right now. So I, I think we'll have to see where that goes. And I have, given the limited number of charging stations people are installing and the limited number of cars out there, I haven't heard any real concerns about um, time of day charges or or anything like that yet, though that's something I think we all need to be mindful of and thinking about. 